Mr. District Attorney, starring David Bryan. Mr. District Attorney, champion of the people, defender of truth, guardian of our fundamental rights to life, liberty, and the pursuit of happiness. And it shall be my duty as district attorney not only to prosecute to the limit of the law all persons accused of crimes perpetrated within this county, but to defend with equal vigor the rights and privileges of all its citizens. Here is our star, David Bryan, as Paul Garrett, Mr. District Attorney. One of the real headaches of my job is the unwary person who walks into the trap of a confidence game. If these people are lucky, they lose only their money. All too often, as you will hear in the case that follows, they also lose their lives. This heat... I never saw such country. Yeah, it's a desert. What'd you expect? I'll be glad to get out of it, I can tell you that. You'll be glad to get the money, too, won't you? I quit belly aching so much. You sure she's got the money? She said she's got it. That's good enough for me. She's still behind us? I can't see in all that dust. Yeah, she's still behind us. Dan, you still think it's a good idea? Suppose somebody comes along and finds her. Out here, this road hasn't been used for ten years. What are you stopping for? This is where we're going to do it. Uh, she's coming up and stopping behind us. Trouble, Mr. Morrow. We can all take my car if we have to. Get out of your car, Miss Smith. But what for? This certainly isn't the place, is it? Are you going to get out or do I have to yank you out? Am I? Mr. Morrow, what kind of an attitude is Come that? on, get out! What? I... Well, it's my car. I guess I can stay in it if I want to. You'll stay out of it. I've never heard of such a thing. If I want to... Better take it easy, Dan. You don't want to leave any marks. I know what I'm doing. Now, shut up. Oh, She's coming too, Dan. Better hurry. get the money? Right here. Gosh, what a wad. Uh-oh, she's on her feet. Mr. Morrow, will you... Will you please tell me why you stalled my car in sand? Keep you from driving it, Miss Smith. You'd like it back to town. And tell them about this. How are you going to make it back to town? Well, I guess I can... Wait a minute. You... You wouldn't leave me out here. There'd be no one to help me. A person would die out here alone. In this heat. Oh, please let me in the car. Get away from that. No. Don't leave me. I'll die. I'll die, Mr. Morrow. Mr. Morrow. Morning, Miss Miller. Oh, good morning, Mr. Garrett. Hello, Harrington. Hi, Miss Miller. Anything stirring? It certainly is. Phone was ringing as I came in the door. Did you read that thing on the front page this morning? About the woman being found dead on the desert? Yes, I read it. I got the paper right here. Died of thirst. Well, this call came from the manager of her bank. He says she drew $10,000 from her account last week in small bills. Thinks it must have been the day before she went to the desert. Well, that's interesting. The bank manager thought so, too. He felt you should know about it. Did he leave his name, Miss Miller? Yes, I've got it here. Um, Mr. Payton. Remind me later to drop him a letter expressing our appreciation for his alertness. Did he give you any information about the woman? Uh, says here in the paper she was a uh, Miss Emily Smith, 48 years old. Mr. Payton says she lived alone, had no relatives that he knows about. Where did they find her, Harrington? Near a highway, wasn't it? Yeah, not far from the general store at Buffalo Springs. What else does it say there? Uh, the 
woman's car was found on an abandoned mine road five miles from where her body was discovered. The car had been driven off the road and was stuck in the sand. Only spinster with 10000 in cash. What would she be doing out in the desert? Might be worth looking into. I think so. Well, Miss Miller, call the sheriff's station at Buffalo Springs. Tell them we'll be there inside the next couple of hours. Come on, Harrington. Captain Kane in. Right here, Mr. Guy. I've been expecting you. Oh, hello, Harrington. Hiya, Pete. Hey, you guys really get it hot up here, don't you? Oh, dry heat. It's good for you. Yeah, it wasn't so good for that woman you found yesterday. No, it sure wasn't. That why you came up? No, that's right, Kane. What do you have on the case? Not too much. Think there's something funny about it? Well, did she have any money on her? Some silver in her purse, a couple of bucks. Anyone see her alive? Yeah, she went into the store... Bought some bottles of pop to take along with her. Storekeeper says she told him she was heading for some kind of an outer space shrine. He said she seemed pretty sensible, though. Shrine? Do you have anything out here like that? Mm, Not that I know about. Sounds like one of those phony religious setups, Chief. Yeah. Coroner's wagon hasn't come up for the body yet, Mr. Garrett. Uh, Would you like to take a look at her? Might as well, I guess. Our morgue is right across the hall here. Is there any evidence of anyone being with the captain? The storekeeper says no one he knows about. Oh, this is it. Second table here. Wow. I never saw anything like that before. Uh, it's dehydration. 48? She looks like 148. As soon as we get back to town, I'd like you to do a checkup on this woman, Harrington. Her habits, friends, everything. Okay, Captain. Cover her up. Hey, it's it's cold in here. <laughs> it's got to be. Line's busy. Who are you calling? Newspaper. Tell them to cancel our ad. I ordered the phone taken out this morning and the electricity turned off. What are you talking about? Well, we don't want to keep paying for them if we're going to take a trip, do we? You just can't wait to start living up that money, can you? I'm sick of waiting. Well, you're going to wait. Then you get on that phone and cancel those stop orders. I won't do it. You promised me that trip and I'm going to have it. Here, give me that phone. No. Give me that. You try it, Dan. You try calling those people and I'll scratch your baggy eyes Don't out. Don't start anything, Connie. I'm warning you. Keep your claws off me. Put that phone down, then. Get away from me, Connie. I'll show Get you. Get away from me. I'll... Why, you... I hope I broke your jaw. Hello, Miss Miller. Chief in yet? Yes, he is, Harrington. Find out anything, Harrington? Yeah, I did, Chief. A couple of things. Number one, Miss Emily Smith has been known as a fanatic for years, hopping from one phony religion to another. Number two, she was also nuts about flying saucers. And this neighbor I talked to, well, she said she just recently joined up with some outer space cult. This ties in with that shrine the storekeeper mentioned. How about the name of the cult? The, uh... Well, neighbor didn't know. But she said she thought Miss Smith got next to it through a through an ad in the personal column. Well, let's see if we can get anything out of that. You still have the paper you had with you this morning? That's here, Mr. Garrett. Please uh, the want ad section. Well, thanks, Miss Miller. Personal column. Now here it is. And here's one that sounds like what we're looking for. Are you aware of the realm of outer space? 
Our flying saucers, the means to our salvation. If you would learn the great truths of our day, join the disciples of the entire universe. Call Elmwood 64245 for an appointment. Hmm. That sounds like a pip. Miss Miller, do you think you'd be interested in joining this group? Sounds like fun. Good. Pick up the phone and see if they'll give you an appointment for this afternoon. <laughs> I can't wait. This is our present meeting place, Miss Miller. But of course, it's nothing to what Mrs. Morrow and I have in mind for the future. You see, Miss Miller, we expect to build a temple of our own. One of the most unique edifices the world has ever seen. A shrine, Miss Miller. A shrine to which the superior beings of outer space will be drawn, summoned by the vibrations of welcome which we will project into the ether. And where will the shrine be located, Mr. Morrow? In the vast open reaches of the desert, but not too far from here. Well within commuting distance. Oh, I'm fascinated. But won't this take a lot of money? Yes, it will. Our greatest problem. And we have no one to turn to but the people who associate themselves with us. Perhaps Miss Miller might be interested in furthering the development of the shrine. <coughs> well, I'm sure Miss Miller would want to know a lot more about it before she has any thoughts like that. And, of course, you'll only be too glad to take the time to tell her. Frankly, yes, I... I would. There are several things she needs to know, particularly the ritual of our initiation. I'll be happy to learn the ritual, but right now I'd better be running along. I have someone waiting for me outside. You'll be back tomorrow? Will that be all right? It'll be fine. Goodbye, Mrs. Morrow. Goodbye, Miss Miller. Goodbye, Mr. Morrow. Goodbye, my dear. Did you have any luck? I'm expected to come back tomorrow. Were you well received? Very well received. I'm to be told all about a shrine in the desert, a place for flying saucers to land and bring us the superior wisdom about a space. Did they mention money? Oh, yes. They need money to build the shrine. Apparently, Miss Smith's $10,000 was only the beginning. Who are these people, Miss Miller? Well, Mr. and Mrs. Morrow. He's Dan and she's Connie, and I know I'm going to be asked for funds. Well, go along with it. Let them think you're an eager prospect, but watch yourself. You're dealing with a pair of ruthless killers. Now back to David Bryan, starring as Paul Garrett, Mr. District Attorney. A woman had been found dead of thirst in the desert, five miles from a stalled car, apparently an accidental death. But word had come to my office that she had withdrawn $10,000 in cash from a bank account the day before her disappearance. Further investigation disclosed that the dead woman had belonged to a pseudo-religious cult featuring flying saucers in its formula a cult supposed to be building a shrine in the desert. Miss Miller had joined the group, and as you'll see, this gave us the break we were waiting for. Well, what are you doing here at this time of the day? I'm waiting to meet Miss Miller. And why can't you meet her at the apartment like you did the others? Is it because she's young and good-looking and you can't bear the thought of having me around when you're with her? Oh, let's not start that again, Connie. You've been seeing her for three days now, Dan. Is she ready to buy in yet? I don't know. All right, keep quiet. Here she comes. Good. Since you're so reluctant to ask for the money, I'll do it for you. I'll give her the same spiel you gave Emily Smith. Listen to me, Dan. I'm pretty good at it. Shut up. Good morning, Miss Miller. Oh, good morning, Mr. Morrow. Hello, Mrs. Morrow. Good morning. You've come in at a rather sad moment in our lives. Oh, I'm sorry. Is there anything I can do to help? Well, it's rather involved... You see, we have this option to buy the land for our desert shrine, but it runs out tomorrow at midnight. And unless we can put up $10,000, we're going to lose it. Oh, but you can't lose it. That's what we've been telling each other. But there it is. Well, there must be something. Well, the other day you said you might be willing to accept 
a financial interest in the shrine? Oh, yes. Stop worrying about it, Mrs. Morrow. I'll put up the money. Wonderful. Could you meet us out there with the money uh, tomorrow afternoon? In the desert? Yes. It's a little place called Buffalo Springs. We could meet in front of the general store. Consider it settled. Miss Miller, you're an angel. Isn't she, Dan? Yes. Yes, she certainly is. Oh, you're too kind, both of you. Now I'd better go and make arrangements about the money. I'll see you both tomorrow. It's me, Mr. Garrett. I couldn't wait to come into the office to tell you. They, they just made the proposition. A trip to the desert? I'm to meet them at Buffalo Springs tomorrow afternoon with $10,000. Okay. We'll fix up the money for you. Better come on in now and we'll work out a plan. You did all right, Miss Miller. Thanks, Chief. Bye for now. There's Miss Miller's car, Chief. Better go behind the store, Harrington, so the Morrows won't see us. Yep. There's a good spot. Right. We can see from here, and they won't notice us. Wow. Boy, this is hot country. Look at that thermometer. 110 degrees. 108, Harrington. You'll never notice the difference. Be philosophical. Remember what Captain Kane said? It's dry heat good for you. Whatever it's good for, I probably don't have. Why? There are the Morrows. Yeah, we aren't going to be able to follow them too closely. They'd see our dust. We know where they're going, and that's the main thing. There they go. We let them get a start and then follow them. Okay, but let's not wait too long. I guess that's far enough ahead now. Let's go. Hold it, Harrington. We might as well face it. We've lost them. This was the right road, wasn't it? No doubt about that. They crossed us up. Went somewhere else. Well, that's bad. I guess we let them get too far ahead. Well, we've got to move fast. No use of chasing them all over this desert. There's an airport at Silver Wells. Head for it. fellas all excited about? Well, my name's Harrington. I'm an investigator. This is the district attorney. Oh, well, I'm Tom Mason. Uh, am I in trouble about something? Or nothing like that. We need your help. There's a girl lost up here, and we have to have a plane to find her. Well, I'm your man. Climb in. Now, watch where you step. It's too bad you have to turn off the engine. No trouble to get it going again. All set. Let her go. Let it go! All right, Dan. Get out and do your stuff. Let, let's call it off, Connie. Let's tell her we've changed our minds. I thought you'd come up with something like that. So I brought this gun along. Oh. You won't take care of her? I will. All right, sister. Where's that money? I see you have a gun. Where's the money? Right here. Thanks. Now back your car off the road. But it'll get stuck. The next one will come a lot closer if you don't do what I tell you. Move the car. Yes, Mrs. Morrow. Now 
what am I supposed to do? Why don't you try walking? See if it'll do you any good. All right, Dan, let's get going. Are you going to leave me here? Consider yourself left. Get moving, Dan. This trip might not be so simple, Connie. We got troubles of our own. What? Car's heating up badly. Can we make it to that motel near the store? Nah, I guess we could do that. Then do it. We can stay there till it cools off tonight and head back to the city. I guess so. See anything down there, Harrington? No, not a thing. I'm beginning to get worried. How far from the store will she be? Could be miles. Well, we've still got lots of time before dark and we... Hey, wait a second. What is it? Well, I saw a car down there off to the left. I'll bank around. Hey, he's right, Chief. Look, there's a car in the sand off the road. She's standing alongside of it, waving at us. Good girl. She was smart enough to stay with the car. Can you land there, Mason? We're practically down. Nothing to do it on that road. Here we go. Climb in. Yeah, pretty smart. Staying by the car. Well, I figured I could always drink the water from the radiator if I had to. <laughs> You're all right, Miss Miller. We all set? All set, Mason. Here we go, then. Hotel is all right. Air conditioning and everything. Yeah. Uh, how do you think that girl feels by now? Who cares? Who's that? How do I know? Open the door. Mrs. Morrow? That's right. I'm Paul Garrett, district attorney for this county. I'd like to ask you a few questions. Well, I can't imagine why. Any objection to my coming in? I think it's kind of nosy, but come on. Thank you. I assume this is Mr. Morrow. Yes, I'm Morrow. What's all this question stuff? You mind telling me what you're doing out this way, Mr. Morrow? Why should I? What are you doing out this way? Well, I came here to investigate the death of a Miss Emily Smith. Uh-huh. So what? Do you happen to know a Miss Smith? No, we didn't. Are you sure about that, Mrs. Morrow? I have information that Miss Smith was a member of a cult or a society run by you people. Well, yeah, I knew her slightly. I'm sure you knew her more than slightly, Mr. Morrow. I have information that you knew her well enough to talk her into coming up here with more than $10,000 in cash. You have all kinds of information, haven't you? Yes, I do. I also happen to know that you arranged to meet another person up here. A young woman by the name of Miss Miller. Isn't that true, Mr. Morrow? I don't know what you're talking about. She came up here today. You and Mrs. Morrow took her out to an abandoned road and forced her to turn over the money she had with her. And then you left her there with a car stuck in the sand. You're crazy, mister. Let's see you produce us, Miss Miller. I can do that all right. She's outside. You see, we landed an aeroplane on that road about a half hour ago and picked her up. And the money you took from her happens to be marked. You think you're going to be able to explain that? Dan, what are we going to do? I told you this was a bad one. You got me into this, you little... <laughs> now you, mister, get out of my way. You're pretty good at slugging women. Let's see you try with me. I'm going to do just that. <clears throat> hey, I thought I heard a commotion in here. You did. Come on in, Harrington. They're all yours. <laughs> This is David Bryan. I hope you enjoy this case from the files of Mr. District Attorney. 
I'll be back in just a moment after this message from our sponsor. Now, here is the star of Mr. District Attorney, David Bryan, with a word about the program you have just heard. No doubt you remember the facts of this case. The couple we call the Morrows were tried and found guilty of murder in the first degree, also of conspiracy to commit murder and highway robbery. Both are now serving life sentences. Now, this is David Bryan inviting you to join us when we present our next case based on the facts of crime from the file of Mr. District Attorney. Mr. District Attorney was originated by Phillips H. Lord. <laughs> 